Hey guys, welcome back to another battle report. This time I have my Crusaders uh, against the uh, Punch Scots. We're doing an eight point game. I'm going through the Crescent and Cross at the moment and just picking out some scenarios because they're a bit more different to the uh, the original scenarios. So I'll be doing the last stand scenario. Um, the Scots are defending and I'm attacking. And uh, basically in this you bid and to say how many turns you reckon you can absolutely wipe out the opponent. Um, my bid was 12. Uh, I think my opponent's bid was something like 20. He decided he wanted to defend, but afterwards realising it probably wasn't such a great idea, because he could have probably bid, uh, you know, 10 or so, because my arms, arm is not great on the defence, um, but the Scots are very good on defence with their abilities. So here's a quick look at my army. I've gone for four points of Hearthguard, three of them mounted, one on foot to chase anything out of terrain. Um, my list was made prior to knowing what I was what battle I was doing as I do for uh, all games um, and then I've gone for four units of warriors and one of which with the crossbow uh, I like the crossbow it's good for uh, taking down enemy hearth guard from a distance and my warriors are there I can split up into small units if I want to generate a lot of saga or a big block to try and hold things up so a quick look at my opponent's force he's gone for two units of 12 levy he's gone for three warriors and three hearth guard uh the hearth guard you see here he's just put them into the six man units i'm a six man unit fan myself four is too weak um unless it's designed for a specific purpose six is a pretty good average size that's what i normally put my mounted units in and it's just a normal warlord as well so here's a quick look at the setup. Uh, I didn't start with anything on the board. All my stuff moved on in my turn. Uh, my opponent sets up. As you can see, he's put a lot of his um, units into the cover and the terrain. Uh, he gets to set up the terrain, so he's gone for two woods. And um, as you can see, he's formed up. Also, all his units start with a fatigue as well. As you can see, them uh, yellow markers spread amongst them. So my opponent in the front there has got a unit of 12 levy. In the woodland, he's got um, six earth guard. Another unit six health guard to the left. Then he's got warrior warrior, and from the left another warrior unit in the woods along with his warlord, a warrior unit out in the open next to his warlord, a levy at the front, and that was the other warrior you saw just a minute ago. My side, I decided to bunch my. Um, cavalry all into one massive 12 man hearth guard block the fact that my units come back to life means i can really hammer them early on i've only got 12 turns to wipe them out so that's what i'll be going for i've got a small four man unit of warriors at the back there just to generate saga i've got my hearth guard at the four man hearth guard unit at the back uh, they'll probably be ready to be pushed up to go into the woods and chase out his hearth guard uh two units of warriors and uh, finally a 12 man unit of warriors again a big block so i can just get up there and get as many attacks out as i can so my opponent's turn, he doesn't do a hell of a lot, um, he just starts getting some fatigue removed, as you can see, he's only got what, one unit left with fatigue on now. Um, also, he was uh, quite often holding Sargadice back to make sure he got the No Mercy ability, um, I think that basically gives him like a small orders phase in his own turn, uh, so yeah, these guys can be quite annoying. With time and issue, I just go to charge straight in. I was pretty reluctant to charge any of the um, levy. I know a lot of their abilities really help out the levy. Um, but with the fatigue on, I'm, I'm going in with the fatigue. And with, what, 24 attacks, I should be able to do some damage here. Uh, but he plays one of his battle board abilities, which allows them to flee. Uh, so they scarper off over here. Um, I, I just keep going with it. Uh, this turn, I rolled up and I managed to get my 6 which is my uh, fortitude virtue, which is my big one, so I can dish out quite a few attacks now. Um, so yeah, I just went with it. I didn't mind about casualties, it had to kill him. So into there I go, and I got another two fatigue there, one for another action, and of course, in the Crescent and Cross rules, uh, any cavalry going into rain also gain a fatigue. So I'm going in against his hearth guard with three fatigue, but with hopefully 24 attacks, I can do some damage. Yeah, so the defensive abilities really showed themselves there, and he managed to kill three off. Uh, in, well, uh, he also managed to kill three of me, so I end up uh, bouncing. And so you can see I've moved up here, so I've used my uh, big unit of warriors up as well. Um, I didn't have any enough saga dice to do anything else, because I went wanted to get my fortitude. And uh, one thing I did forget was my warlord's free, I'll be with, you know, uh, determination and with me rule. And uh, failed to uh, move up my other hearth guard as I had planned to support my cavalry. My opponent just shuffles about and then starts um, putting all his de defensive abilities up. Um, I don't think he does anything else. Actually, in the far side there, he has brought his warriors out of the woods, which surprised me somewhat. 
So this turn I've I start moving everything up now. I think I remember my warlord and uh, keep everything moving. If I lose my warlord, I lose by the way. Um, so I do hold back with him, but I do use him to push everyone else up. Um, again, I push up with my uh, big 12 man unit of warriors to try and do some damage on the levee. And I go in once again with my big 12 man block of knights. And even with a few defensive abilities, he's really struggling to hold up against such a big unit of knights. I have to say, a 12 man block of a uh, hearth card is a uh, nightmare to stop uh, i don't think i'd easily be able to stop it myself unless i only had my own large unit of uh, hearth guard but yep yeah, went in there and wiped out six of the uh, eight warriors and that's the end of my turn and just looking at those two dice on the right hand side there we see we've got uh, nine turns left um yeah so i've left my warrior uh, my warlord back here just so he doesn't get sniped off because if i lose him it's game over for me uh, this time my opponent rolled some good dice and managed to get to activate some of his levy and shot off a few of my mounted chaps there. Uh, this wasn't too much of a downside with me because uh, that meant I had a big enough unit I was going to bring him on for next turn. Um, he has been doing it so far because he's been using his defensive abilities but other than that he's just moved up to fill in the hole, make sure I can't get behind him and try and take out my hearth guard he will. Uh, but that's all he does for his turn. So yeah, my casualties for my hearth guard so far have now come on as reserves, and because they're mounted, they can come from on from the left or right hand side of the table. And uh, you can see them in a kind of mixed order here because I wanted to get as many in that area as I could. And you can only set up within two inches, so it's only like the base width of a um, a knight, uh, mounted model anyway. So that's my setup, as you can see there. Then I've then raced those chaps up to catch them in behind, so then I've got cavalry to the front and behind them. Um, if they were foolish enough to come out of the train, I was going to make them pay for it. And uh, I'm just going to go head for tails here and try and take out his warlord. Less saga dice he has, the less he can do, and less he can defend himself with. Uh, ended up with a 4 for 1, I was quite happy with that, so I could drive these guys off. And since they have fatigue on them anyway and they're already damaged, I thought, what the hell, I'll throw my warriors in against them as well. Um, I did this instead of my other cavalry because i have a feeling my cavalry might be within two inches of his chaps in the woods and uh yeah if they, if they come out i'll end up having to charge them so in went in with my warriors to drive off his warriors with their fatigue on it i've definitely got the advantage in combat and that wipes them out which puts plenty of fatigue on all those units around them uh, which is fantastic so it's almost taken these um levy out of the game for a minute and i had noticed time was ticking away um not a massive amount of turns left. As I say, we're playing an 8-point game, so it's hard work getting through these guys. So I might go to plan B, which is uh, simply wipe out everything else but his levy. And with the chance to strike at the Warlord, um, looking back at this, it's probably not a huge advantage for me to go in there. Um, he has got two guys there he could probably pass on to wounds. But I have got lots of attacks, and I hope to get a few through on him. <laughs> and I suspected I did just enough just to get off the two bodyguards, uh, or body bags as the case may be of his uh, warriors next to him and drive them off and here's how we're looking and I'm pretty happy in the uh, how things are looking for me I've still got plenty of reserves to run in there um, I'm trying to throw my uh, big units in with not worrying about the casualties because I'll get my units back I have to say this is quite a challenge for any defender to try and hold out against this kind of um, clash especially if the opponent's got cavalry and can come on the flanks so I think if I had an all foot army uh, like my anglo-saxons or something be a lot harder um a hell of a lot harder to attack simply because i'll be marching back on from the other side of the board but with the cavalry's quick movement and my ability to come in on the flanks and run around them much better and some arch shooting comes loose here and uh, kills off three of my guys and that's the end of my opponent's turn as you can see uh, he's tucked away into the woods now knowing how bad it is to be out in the open and uh, pincered between two cavalry units and my foot there. Um, his warlord's gone in behind to hiding behind a big warrior unit in the hope to uh, keep him as alive as long as he can. So I go in with my chaps and smash up the warrior unit that was uh, blocking his warlord, access to his warlord off. I kill four of the six and he manages to kill off one of mine. So I then engage his little two man unit there just to get, again try and reduce his saga and well the point of the game is to wipe him out so I wipe those guys out which chucks around more fatigue. And with the right, remaining saga dice I start pushing my force upwards as you can see there I'm keeping my warlord still nearer the back uh, but he has got a, a nice bodyguard around him in case his uh, archers start firing <laughs> but with four fatigue on that front levy isn't doing much it's just the back levy I might want to chase off in a minute. 
those archers have another shot and kill off a few more and my opponent decides to come in with his warlord and um, bodyguard and try and do some damage to my warriors at uh, my uh, hearth guard and with thanks to his warlord he actually managed to beat me off um, I couldn't get very many in contact because cavalry uh, in theory fighting two ranks so the two guys at the back there weren't attacking uh, with his attacks he managed to wipe out two of mine and only lost one of his so at the end of opponent's turn we're looking for something like this uh, these archers begin to annoy me so I thought I'd quickly charge them yeah, being in such a long line he's only probably going to get what, six uh, able to fight me uh, he can fight within I think it's two inches of um, an enemy model so if, Roughly, it's going to be three guys. That's how we, we tend to work it out in ranks. So, cavalry fighting two ranks, infantry fighting three. And that kind of just solves any problems then of measuring everything individually. So, as you can see here, he'll be fighting with six. Um, and Levy get one per three. So, two attacks against my guys. So, I should drive him off here quite happily. Yeah, with four kills and no losses, uh, we give him a good shove. And then once again I go have a go at his warlord, I see I've brought the other cavalry unit round now and um, charge them in, try and do as much damage as I can. With two fatigue on there's some good wounds I can get through. I know he's got a lot of guys within uh, range of him, he's got what four additional wounds there. But if you spread them around too much, um, obviously I'm, I'm just doing more damage, whatever happens, so I'm, I'm happy with that. So yeah, I did two extra wounds and... Uh, killed off two hearth guards that was an easier way of killing off two hearth guard uh, obviously you can kill off the warrior at the top there um, he'd be uh, afraid to get more fatigue out obviously I didn't spend any of his fatigue this time so there's, there's been more chucked down around there and just to try and soften up his hearth guard before my hearth guard go in I uh, fire up with my crossbow and manage to take one out and we're looking something like this and I think my opponent's catching on now that I've managed to separate the levy off and I'm just going to concentrate on his uh, hearth guard warriors and his warlord um, you see his warlord's been pushed there, he's pushed him back into the um, terrain as well. So he's pretty safe right round. Um, but I've got loads of warriors and I'm not worried about casualties in the slightest. So they'll be going in. Um, his turn doesn't do a lot, he just gets a lot of defensive abilities up. Uh, there's nothing really he wanted to do. So uh, I again, fired again and managed to shoot another one off with my crossbowman. And then I went in with a, my Dane Axeman and I fully kitted them up. I think they had the five extra attacks and like re-roll failed to wounds I managed to roll a six so I didn't have my armor lowered so they just went in there and hammered the hell out of him of course he didn't want to share the wounds around because there's so many wounds he's going to wipe out one of his units and most of the other so he just killed off his warlord and um, for the loss of only one Dane Axeman I was well chuffed with that I'm glad I brought him and I activate them again to go and take off that final hearth guard and they managed to do it with no casualty and with him only down to um, I think I went in there and finished off his uh, little one-man warrior unit as well. And with him down to one Saga Dice and that poor Hearth Guard unit with four um, fatigue tokens, there wasn't a lot he could do. Um, the next turn, I smashed up that unit and won the game by default. Because um, once you can't generate any Saga Dice, as the lever don't generate any Saga Dice, uh, the game is automatically lost. So I managed to come in there and uh, left the levy and still won the game. I have to say this scenario is particularly difficult I think for the defender as I said, especially against the cavalry mounted force I think we have to try this again but the other way around as well Hey guys so it's uh, giveaway time and um, what have I got to give away and how you can win it uh, Right first of all this will be given away on the 40th Saga battle board um, I've changed how I'm originally going to do it and that's what I'm going for now I'll type in the comment section hail and the first say 20 people to reply Ragnar uh, will be put into a draw I'll roll a, a d20 and uh, someone will randomly win and what I've got to offer here is from Griffin Beast uh, many thanks to them we have the saga rulebook along with the four battle boards included which is the Welsh Norman Viking and Anglo Danish and also two lots of dice we have the Crusader dice there and the Viking dice as well and on top of that I've also chucked in four berserkers that I've painted up as well so I uh, hope this of use to you and I hope you have to be up for that so I'll see you on the 40th episode as always guys many thanks for watching and I'll see you next time that well